back again. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you had a good night. Did you have a good rest last night? Yes, 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 tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. I, I had a good time last night here worshiping with you, and God has been so good to us. Amen. Uh, that he watched over us while we slept last night, and um, he has woken us up this morning and given us this day, and we're back at this spot where the bush burns. Amen. Which burns. Let me add my quote of welcome to all of you who have decided to worship with us here tonight, wherever you're worshiping from. We are happy to have you. I will not leave out the folks online. We have some online people. And by the way, we just want to tell the online people that we recognize your, con your um, participation. Um, a number of, of our online um, brethren have indicated um, interesting participation. So I want to shout out just a few of them. Yeah, Roy from the UK. We did see your response coming in, Roy. Uh, beautiful. And also Arlene McLeod. We're happy to for your response from New York. Marlon Beaumont. We are happy for the decision Mar Marlon is making. And also from Ohio, we have Winsome Brown. We saw that Winsome. Thanks for your commitment and your decision to follow the Lord. And of course, I see here Rosalini Bloom. Now, this name strikes a chord for me. This sounds like my friend all the way in Silicon Valley in California. Uh, good to have you and the decision that you're making. A number of individuals from different parts of the world who have uh, listened to the, to the sermon and have indicated that they have been blessed and that they are making decisions and a number of them have indicated that they would like to be baptized what the church say Amen. and we will organize a foreign baptism right. <laughs> Amen. yeah yeah we'll organize a foreign baptism wherever in the world you are we'll be organizing a foreign baptism the last place we brought this campaign was in Gloucestershire UK we just had this year um, we were there, and there are a number of individuals who are watching from there. So wherever you're watching from, we pray that the Lord will bless and keep you. Now, were you blessed last night? Yeah. Yep, yep. By the way, what did we talk about last night? Is God still coming? And what is your answer? Yes, yes he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I, I forgot to, to tell you last night that... I, what inspired this message uh, during the lockdown in 2020, um, I couldn't go to work or church or anything. So I used my, I was in California and was, we were locked down for two years. So I used my two years to dig into the prophetic word of God. And the Lord led me to this major, major project. So I have written a book entitled, Is God Still Coming? Yep, it's God's that, so you got a piece of it last night. The rest, the, rest, the rest of it is in this book. I was trying, I tried, ordered some to bring with me, but it won't be here in time. And I found two copies in my house. And when I realized, when I checked it out, these were the initial, um, I call them the rough copy. Not my personal copy. I don't give them away because it's the rough copy. It's my personal copy. But I've decided to carry them tonight and share them with somebody. If you were blessed last night, this, <laughs> if, you were, if you were blessed last night, this copy is yours. But here's a, here's a price, here's a price. The person who take the most friends with you tonight, if you bring the most guests with you tonight, this copy is yours. Outside of that, you'd have to buy it on Amazon, 20 US dollar, it goes for anybody with, anybody with 25 guests. 30? 35? Going in the wrong direction? <laughs> All right, let me go. 25, 20? 20, anybody bring 20? You must can get 20 people in Portmore. What about 15? What about 14, 13, 13? Shall I go any further? I am, um, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I feel like Abraham and God negotiating. <laughs> Don't in lot. <laughs> Don't in Saddam. Well, what about 12? What about 11? All right, for the last time, I got one more, 10. 
All right, good. So, someone brought 10? I don't see any 10. Okay, so guess what? Guess what I do? I'll keep my two copies. And I'll bring them back tomorrow night. Is that all right? Yeah, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow night. And the first person will bring 25. Now, give me my book free. <laughs> the, first, the first person will bring 25 guests, right? Not church member, not your church member. 25 visitor. This is yours. And if you bring 50, you get both of them. By the way, we have buses, so you can order a bus. Amen? Yeah, yeah. We have buses. You can order a bus. So, so all right, I'll put, I'll, put, I'll put up my book. You want to get a copy of that book, the whole, we look, at, we look at the end time prophecy and how things that we see around are fulfilling prophecy is a must have. So please get one of them. Is that all right? Amen, amen. All right, let's tell you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. If we can just put my slide up on the screen so that we can go into what's happening for the rest of this week. Um, here we go. So tonight we're dealing with the subject. When we pray and then tomorrow night when you get here, the powerful presentation, there is one more hymn. On his garment. Make sure you're here tomorrow night. Somebody, somebody by God's grace will be able to reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Whatever your circumstances, tomorrow night we're going to open the prior tower right here. Bring all the sicknesses and the diseases and whatever it is, come here. Here will be healing in the bam yard tomorrow night. We're going to make sure you bring out your folks and we're going to lift up these individuals before the Lord because we still believe that God works miracle. Amen. One more hem on his garment tomorrow night. And then on Thursday night is a night when you, you cook. What, what do you cook for dinner on, in Portmore on Thursday night? Chicken foot soup? No? What? Huh? Ro <laughs> Roast tofu and bitter herb. Oh, man. Well, tomorrow night, don't come here tomorrow night. There'll be no meeting. That's your rest night. Get some rest. But on Friday night, you are to walk in here with somebody. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Walk in. If you're married, walk here with your husband. If you're not married, walk here with your somebody. And if you don't have anybody, come here and hope that God bless you with somebody. Amen. Tomorrow night's presentation, come your way. I mean, Friday night. Friday night is our family life presentation. Here is it. A big presentation before you say, I do. Yep, 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 yep. Some people regret saying, I do. Mm hmm. So we'll <laughs> talk about that on Friday night before. That, by the way, that's just part one. Part two will be the next week, Friday night. And then on Saturday morning, live, this big presentation comes your way. Coming home with a link, with a limp. You don't want to miss that by God's grace. That's our lineup for the rest of this week. And um, please don't miss any one of them. And for those of you online, praise and worship will join me. Let's stand as we sing our theme song and get ready for a major presentation tonight. Let's stand on our thing. Holy words long preserved for a walk in this world, they resound with God's own heart. Or oh, let the ancient word in part. Let's get a little pep in that song. A little pep in that song. Here we go. Holy words long preserved for a walk. For Sacrifice. 
come again tonight to hear from you one more time please Lord remove me because I am not necessary and you speak to your people all by yourself in Jesus name I pray amen When, when you pray, when you pray, um, I think, I've, I don't know if I've mentioned to you, but I've taken this series of sermons, the countdown series all over the world, and it's a set of sermons and sometimes I try to see, okay, which one should I leave out? Talk with the Lord about it. And which one should I add in? And I have a problem changing any one of them. This is one I just can't touch. Because last night I told you that Christ is still coming. Amen? And on Sunday night I showed you how close it is. The only way you and I are going to make it into the God's kingdom is if we learn how to pray. Hear me when I say, if you can't sing, that's all right. Amen. Some of us can't sing. So we make a joyful noise. And if you can't preach, that's okay. Amen. But if you can't pray, you have a problem. And therefore, if you ask me, one of the most important things the church ought to do is to teach its members how to pray. And don't take it for granted. I was telling you the other night that I've been to NCU. That's where I did my bachelor's in theology. Good college. Still our alma mater. But I didn't remember, pastor, not a single Subject on how to pray. They taught us how to preach. Cause it is called homiletics. You have to start with introduction and body and conclusion and appeal. And you have to pass it before you become a pastor. And they taught us how to sing. God bless Mrs. Anderson. Music appreciation. You have to know to conduct this stuff. But they didn't teach us how to pray. And I noticed something in the Bible. 
I noticed that Jesus did not teach the disciples how to preach. And he didn't teach them how to sing. Somebody start to preach with the preacher. But I noticed that he taught them how to pray. See, see, we have a problem in the church. Mm -hmm. Which church? This church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a problem in the church. Here, here, here's a problem. Here's the problem. We will spend big money to bring in a powerful preacher. And the tent will be filled. We will spend big money bringing powerful singers. And the tent will be filled. <laughs> help the preacher, help the preacher. Hey, hey, if we bring a concert out here, the tent is full. But if we call for a prayer meeting, We pay to go listen to big singers. And even when we send a taxi to your house to come prior meeting, he ain't coming. We are measuring in our minors. See the problem? This is the problem. So <laughs> stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. You don't want to stone the preacher. You sure? Because I'm afraid of stone. <laughs> come, come with the preacher. Come with me. I, I, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 11. The Bible says, It came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. As Jesus was praying. Jesus, Jesus prays very often, you know. Yeah, he was praying in a certain place. When, when he ceased, when he stopped praying, that one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. Good guy, good guy. So, so that's, that's, that's what the text says. One of the disciples said, Lord, teach us. And, I, I don't, I, and I'm happy that they asked Jesus because he gave us a lesson on prayer. Right? That was in Luke. But the big lecture on prayer that every university is supposed to be teaching is here, is here, is here. On the Sermon on the Mount. It's in, it's in Matthew chapter 6. Fascinating stuff. So if you guys have been praying and nothing happening, uh, we, you, may, you may now know tonight as to the reason why. Are we together? Because every one of you, before you leave here, you must learn how to pray, whether you're a member or no member, church person or no church person, whichever church you belong to, you got to learn how to pray. That's one thing we're going to do tonight. So here's what Jesus, what Jesus has to say. I, I call it the anatomy of prayer. Here's it. Here's it. Number one, where should we pray? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody say, you can pray any way you want to pray. Well, well, since Jesus is a professor on prayer, let's ask him. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah look, notice, this is, not, this, is not, this is not a denominational position. All right? This is Bible. Are we together? Yes. So where should we pray? Well, here Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Uh, by the way, what's the sermon title again? What's my sermon title? When you pray, here's it coming. Verse 5, Matthew 6, verse 5. Let's read. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. Pause, pause, because there's a full stop. You know, my teacher said, when you say full stop, you must stop. Okay? All right, boys. <laughs> so, so, hey, Jesus says, when you pray, don't pray like hypocrites. Uh-huh. Which means that hypocrites pray too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen? 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 So the fact that somebody praying don't mean that they're righteous. Mm -hmm. Because hypocrites pray too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Jesus says. So, he says. so, and by the way, and not only do they pray, the Bible says they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Uh-huh. 
So when the hypocrite praying, he don't want to pray around a little back room where nobody see him. No, no, no. He want to come out in the street that everybody see that he's praying. And when you see that he's praying, you'll think he's holy. That's a hypocrite. Amen. That's a hypocrite. That's a hypocrite. When I'm finished with this, you can pick up the hypocrites in the church, you know. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hypocrite. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to pray unless church full. <laughs> call, call, call them to come Wednesday night to pray. They don't want to come Wednesday night to pray. They want to come Sabbath morning when church full. Hypocrite! Hypocrite. They love to, oh God. They love to show off when they're praying. And they use some words you can't even pronounce it. Hypocrite. They love, they love to pray in the street so that they may be seen by men. Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Don't follow them. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I'm in verse 5. I'm going to verse 6. And, but Jesus said, I'm in verse 6. Now. Oh, when? Oh, sorry. We, we, we passed it already. Verse 6 now. But when? But you. Uh, let, you see, there's this comma. See this comma. But you. Amen. You member of the church. You who have a connection with God. You who have humility in your heart. Jesus says, when you pray, go in your, in your closet. Yes, go in your closet. Amen. What's the closet? What's the closet? In a closed space. Amen. A private room. Uh, is the church with me? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I love this. When Jesus says, when you pray, I am telling you, it's me you're going to pray to when I go to heaven. When you're going to pray, come out of the crowd and go in a private room. Are you with me? Is the church with me? And even when you go in the private room, shut the door behind you. Ain't nobody need to know that you're praying. Because you're not praying to them, you're praying to God. Shut the door. Somebody say, hey, sister, I'll pray you baptized. I never see you pray yet. You don't need to see me pray. You're not God. Not praying to you. Shut, shut, shut the door. Amen. Lock yourself in the room. Hey, hey, hey. If you live by yourself, lock yourself in a bedroom. If a lot of people in your house and you don't have any space, go in the bathroom, lock it. And pray inside. Can I pray in the bathroom? Yes, you can pray in there. Must be better than, than um, uh, Jonah's whale's belly. <laughs> hey, hey. Shut the door. And then, and then, watch it. And then pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who, is, who sees you in... Yeah, and we'll reward you. In other words, Christ says, My heavenly Father will reward the secret prayer. Watch me, watch me, watch me. So, uh, this is how it works. So you go in your little closet and you pray secretly, amen? Nobody don't know that you're praying. But when God ready to answer, he answer public. Hey, hey, hey. You pray secretly and God answer. Come one more time. You pray secretly and God answer publicly. Amen. So people see your blessing coming, but they didn't know that you spent all night long. Hey, they see God moving you up and they don't know how many hours you spend on your knees talking to God. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Amen. So if all you do is pray on Sabbath morning in church, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. By the way, those are not the prayer that impress God. They impress the congregation. 
<laughs> hang on, hang on. So I have a question for you. Uh, does Jesus have a closet? Because, you know, it's him we follow. Amen? Amen? Adventists follow him. Baptists follow him. Pentecostals follow him. Everybody follow him. I hope. So does he have a closet? Well, I check it out. <laughs> Amazing. Here's a text. Matthew 14, verse. I start to track Jesus to see when he pray, if he goes into closet. Matthew 14, verse 22 and 23 says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get. They were in a mountain. They had a big service one day. And when the sun set and the day was finished, the Bible says, He, he made his disciples get into a boat and go before him to the other side. While he sent the multitudes... At a big campaign, day sunset. So he says, hey guys, all of you, all of you disciples, you go in a boat and go ahead. I'll dismiss the crowd. Are you with me? So he sent out the disciples and then he dismissed the crowd. I'm in the next verse. And, and when, help me read. And when he had sent the multitude away, the Bible says, he went up on the mountain by himself. Hey. And now when evening came, he was there alone. Because, because when Jesus is, I always, every time Jesus is praying, he dismisses the crowd and he goes by himself. Amen. Because he's practicing the closet principle. Are you with me? Oh, you don't believe the preacher? He was there alone by himself. Here, 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 verse 16. Another one. Luke 5, verse 16. I was in Matthew. Here's another time. I tracked Jesus and I spotted this text. Here's it. So he, come on, read me. So he himself often, the word is what? Often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed by himself. Send with Andrew. Peter, James, and John. When prayer time come, is you know, I, I just, I, I think we have it. I don't know how we have it. How we get it so mixed up. Some people are afraid to pray by themselves. They have to get some people. No, 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 no. Send them away. Amen. And you and God locked down. A amen. Because when you, hey, when you and God in that closet, you know, you can just open. <laughs> you can just open your heart to God. Your subject don't have to agree with the verb. Your pronunciation don't have to be right. Are you with me? You don't have to hide what you want to say. You can tell him all your sorrows. You can tell him all your joys. You can tell him what pleases you. You can tell him what annoys. Hey! And so we talk together. My Lord and I. You can be genuine with God. You can ball if you want ball, laugh if you want laugh. You and God wrapped up and tangled up in intimate communication. Hey, 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 you can't bring, no, don't bring anybody in your closet. Not even your husband. He must have his own closet. Uh, not even your wife, they must have, it. hey, there's a place for family worship. There's a place for family worship. And it's not in the closet. It's in the living room. When they come to you and God is closet. That's where the power comes from. So, <laughs> so I was tracking Jesus. And I said, okay. Let me see what Jesus do when he's, in, when he's suffering. Does he call for the members of the church? And let them pray for him. <laughs> hey, I enjoy this thing. So I, I track Jesus to get Gethsemane. And I say, okay. Well, this is a rough spot he's going through. And I think he may need the prayers of those I love. So, so I'm in Matthew 26, verse 36. The text says, Then Jesus came with them, the disciples, to a place called Gethsemane. Is the church with me? Yeah, this is, this is hours before the crucifixion. Uh, and he said to the disciples, 
Watch it. So they, they, they left the communion room that Thursday evening and they went straight to Mount Olivet, uh, uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane, and, and all of Jesus and 11 disciples. Because one already gone. Is the church with me? Yes. And Jesus seemed really, really burdened. So he, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he said to the 11, he says, sit here. <laughs> watch this. Watch the closet. Watch the closet. Watch the closet. Sit here, you, you people. Sit here while I go over there to do what? Pray. To pray. Because I don't want you to come with me. <laughs> Sit here while I go over there and pray because I can't carry you in my no, you're preaching with me. I can't carry you in my closet. So, so, so I get, so I watch, so I'm watching this thing. So, okay. So I watch it. Verse 37. So he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Peter, James, and John. So I said, okay, well, maybe he's going to, you know, those are the close, those are the closest one to him, you know. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are the closest one to him. The, the holy three. So I said, okay, well, maybe he's going to bring them into his closet. So I'm watching the thing carefully. Then he said to them, then he said to them, verse 37, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. And then he went. <laughs> Then he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed and said, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup be passed from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. So watch it. If you take a drone and take an aerial view of the Garden of Gethsemane, what you will see, you will see how many, how many disciples he went up there with? Eleven. So you will see eight sitting You'll see eight here, so, where he says, sit here. Are yeah. we together? Yeah. And then, oh, a little way up here, so, you'll see. Three. Now you're preaching with me. Three, Peter, James, and John. And then he left them there because they can't come into closet. No matter how close they are to Jesus, he left them there. And he went to closet all by himself. Eight down here, three here. And him up here. Because he need to talk to his father. Amen. In secret. So that the father can bless him. In open. You going home with that formula? Are you going home with that formula? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So after he did that, then he came to the disciples and he found them sleeping. <laughs> the three years of... <laughs> and there's a choir down here. <laughs> Oh Lord, and he said to him, and he said to Peter, the three right here, he said to Peter, What could you not watch with me for one hour? You fast, you fast asleep so quick. He was disappointed. Disappointed. Hang on, hang on. And then he said to Peter, watch and pray. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Because the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is here. here. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus says, if you know, hey, brother Peter, Peter, I'm talking to you, Peter. If you know what is waiting on you down the road, you would stay in your closet and you will pray. Because if you sleep in your closet, you're going to have a problem down the road. So let me show you the consequences of sleeping in the closet. The consequences of sleeping when you should be praying. Let me show you the consequence. I'm in Luke 22, verse 40 to 43. I was in Matthew. Now Luke gave us his version of the same thing. Is the church with me? 
but Luke inserted something that Matthew did not insert. Here is Luke. When he came to the place, this is Gethsemane, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into. So by now you know prayer is a weapon against the people who are praying will resist temptation. Are you with me? You can stand like a brave with your face to the foe when you are praying. So he says, pray that you do not enter into temptation. Watch this. Watch the consequence. Watch the consequence. I'm in verse 40. I'm going to verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. Aha. So, so let, let's go back to the aerial view. So he left eight down here. You with me? And then up here is three of them up here. And then he was, the Bible said he went a little further. Now Luke, tell me how much further he went. How much further? A stone throw. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. I don't know how long a stone throw is. Depends on who threw it. But, but, but what it implies, it Im watch this, watch this, don't miss this. It implies that he was not out of sight, but out of hearing. Yeah, you gotta say. It implies they can't hear, but they can see him out there praying. Now, why is that important? Watch this, watch this. I'm in verse 41. I'm going to verse 42. So, so he prayed, he knelt and prayed saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. I'm in verse 43. Then, watch the preacher. Then, while he was praying, come on church in Portmore, an angel appeared to him from Heaven and do what? Strengthen him. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. While he was out here, a stone throw away. They, they are able to see him, but they can't hear him. Good, watch me. And while he was praying, what were they doing? Sleeping, uh -huh, watch this now. So while they were sleeping in their closet, an angel appeared unto Jesus over here and strengthened him. The servant of the Lord says, not one of the disciples saw the angel. Had they seen the angel, had Peter seen the angel when they said to Peter, you are one of them, he would have had the power of the Holy Ghost. To resist the temptation. But he was sleeping when he should be praying. He was sleeping when he should be praying. And because Jesus prayed. The angel came. Oh, by the way, get, get a picture. Get, this is night, you know. This is get somebody in the night. So when the angel came up, guess what happened to the hillside? Light up with the glory of God. Hey, and they didn't even see the light. Three times, Jesus go wake them up. Consequence of sleeping when you should be praying. One of the reasons why the church is so weak. We do more singing than we do praying. Here's a consequence. Hey, 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 hey. Here's a consequence of Brother Peter. A few hours later, by the time sun set, sun rose, and they took Jesus to Caiaphas' house and started the process of interrogation. Peter followed and the eight followed, but they stay a little way off. Peter was cold in the early morning. They, somebody made fire and he go warm up himself beside the fire. And the flicker of the flame shone on his face and somebody saw him. 
In fact, the first man who saw him is the man whose ears he cut off. Malchus. Say, hey, you're one of them. And even though Peter cut off the man's ears, Peter still tell him, no, it's not me. One time. Within a short space of time, another person said, hey, you're one of them. No, not me. And within an hour, the next man said, surely you're one of them. I saw you with him. Peter said, listen, man, don't let me. It's not me. It's not me. I don't know the man. Man, I do not know what you are saying. And immediately, and immediately what happened? The cock crow, read my lips. This don't come from me. This come from the servant of the Lord, Ellen White. This half ages. Three times Peter slept when he should have been praying. Three times he denied Jesus. There's a consequence of sleeping when you should be praying. So Peter, after that thing, you know, after the cock crew, I hope some more cock crew in Portmore. <laughs> Where have all the roosters gone? Hey! Where have all the roosters gone? Because that rooster saved Peter. The Bible says he went outside. He wept bitterly. He regretted that he denied Jesus. Read the stuff in these half ages. He's blinded by his tears. He stumbled back to the same place in Gethsemane. Throw himself down on the wet grass. And he Paul asked God for forgiveness. God, I mess up big time. How come I didn't see this coming? And he begged forgiveness and he wept. By the time it was finished, Jesus was already crucified. He don't get no chance for, to see Jesus to ask forgiveness. That's why early Sunday morning, he was one of them run down to the grave to see if he can find Jesus. But oh, this is another sermon by itself. But let me steal a little piece and put in here. Can I steal a little piece and put in here? But oh, anytime. Hey, you know what the Lord loves? A contrite and a broken heart. And when Peter bawled out for forgiveness and bawled out for mercy, even though Jesus was dying, he could feel Peter's forgiveness. And so Sunday morning, when he rose from the dead, he says, Mary, go tell Peter that I'm alive. Hello, somebody. That Sunday evening when they came, when they, Sunday morning when they went, when they went fishing and came back home when we don't know fish, they saw Jesus uh, on the seaside making roast fish and bread. And they came, they came up, they came up to the to, to the shore, and Jesus offered them roast fish and bread, and they ate, and were silent, and in the silence, in the silence. Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Ah. Yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, the second time. You know, the others are there. You could have asked John and James. No, no, it's Peter. It's a problem. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Jesus says, well, feed my sheep. And the, the other disciples wondering, what's going on? Jesus says again for the third time, Peter, do you really and truly love me? Peter get angry. Yeah, God, you know I love you. Not because I messed up the other day. It doesn't mean I love you. You know I love you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. Ellen White. Deserve ages. Three times Peter slept. Three times he denied Jesus. Three times Jesus restore him. Hello, somebody. 
For every time he slip up and ask God forgiveness, God restore him. What a mighty God we serve. That's why I know I'm going to make it. No matter how slip up I slip up. I'm going back to him crawling on my knees. Hey! Going to make it home to glory. Well, that's not my sermon. I just stray. Let me go back to my... Go back to my... What I was talking about again? Prior? Prior, okay. Lesson number two. How long should I... Pray, how long should be my prayer? If I am righteous. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> help us. Oh, oh, how, how, long, how long should be? When we pray, how long should be the prayer? Okay, you know what? There are some people in church. They can't start, but they don't know when to stop. And so, uh, hello, preacher. And sometimes, I don't know where they get this idea from. They, somehow they get the idea that the longer you pray, is the more righteous you look. So, so watch it. So if an if a ordained pastor ever go up there and pray for one minute, they say, that man, no, I'm not God in him. A one minute prayer. So how long should we, Lord Jesus, answer the question? Because I have some long meter people in my church. How long should we pray for? Answer, I'm in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. What was the title of my sermon again? What's the title of the sermon? When you pray, here's the comment. Help me read. And when, help me read. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. Amen. Don't go over and over and over and over. Here, here's, here's why. For, help me read. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. They think the longer the prayer is the more holy they are and God will answer. Rubbish. Complete Rubbish. Verse 8, do not be like them. Do not what? Do not be like them. For your daddy knows what you need even before you ask. Amen. You see these everlasting long prayer? Hypocrite. The Bible says, is a heathen pray that way? Oh, are you still? You don't get it. 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 Let, can, can, I, can I fix it where you can get it? Uh, ask you me proof of word. Let me fix it where you can get it. So Jesus gave us a model prior. Am I right? You know what I did? I, I, watch me. I set a stopwatch. I set a stopwatch and I read the model prayer to see how long it takes. One minute and some seconds. One minute and some seconds. No, go try it out when you go home tonight. One minute and some seconds. The model prayer. Check the prayers in the church. Sometimes they're praying and your mind straight, you don't remember, gone all over the place. And when all will come back, they're still praying. And you say, What in the world? They're praying and your mind go back. Oh, I don't have no milk in the fridge. I don't have no. <laughs> I need to buy toothpaste when I'm going. One minute, go test, test it when you go home. The model prayer, our Father which art in heaven, Allah be thy name. One minute and some seconds. Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. 
You don't need to weary God out. Because he already know what you're going to ask for. So it is a, Lord, I know you know what I want. <laughs> so in the name of Jesus, bless me with it. Amen. Jesus said, hey, two men went up to pray and one give all big long speech and long prayer. Another man just trusted Jesus and said, God, have mercy upon me and a sinner. And Jesus says, that man went home righteous. How did we get prayer so messed up? So wrong? That's what the Bible say. By the way, this is not an Adventist position. This is Bible. Okay. <laughs> Listen. Lesson number three. Lesson number three. I tell you, don't miss any night. You know, you miss at your own risk. <laughs> lesson, lesson, number, <laughs> lesson number three. Why some of you don't get your prayers answered. Because this piece is missing. The power of persistency. What do we mean that? Question. How many times should I ask God for the same thing? If you're just joining us, we're dealing with the subject. When you pray, how many times should we ask God for the same thing? One time? Well, 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 Jesus gave two parables to explain that. The first parable is in Luke 11, verse 5. Here's what he says. And he said to them, which of you shall have a friend? A what? A friend, a bona fide friend. Uh -huh. And go to him at midnight. What time you go to your friend? Midnight. And say to him, friendy. <laughs> and said to your friend, hey bro, lend me three loaves of bread. Are you with me? This is Jesus' story, not mine. Verse 6. Lend me three loaves of bread. Why? Because a friend of mine has come to my house and I really don't have no food to give. No, watch this, no, watch this, no, watch this. Let, let me make sure you get this. Let me, get, let me make sure you get this. This is a friend. Are you with me? Yes. So this man has a friend who come to his house. What time of the night? Midnight. And dinner cook long time, plate wash up long time. There is no food. So he said, boy, this friend that come visit with him and can't let the man go to his bed hungry. So he leave his house and he go to a good friend of his. Is the church with me? Yes. To borrow three loaf, three hard old bread. Yes. All right, good. What time does he check this guy? Yes. Midnight, midnight. Which means that this guy already gone to his bed. It's not like now when you have a, a television running 24 hours per day. Back then Jesus said, as sunset, everybody gone home. There's no light. They gone to the bed. So midnight is in the dead of night. Is the church with me? Yes. Good, good, good. Verse 7. And, and Jesus says, and the friend... Who has the bread will answer from within, from inside his house. His virgin outside knocking, you know. Virgin outside knocking. Who that? Oh, it's me, man. We look at what what going on? In Jamaica. What go on? <laughs> well, you know, a virgin come up from West Milan. One of my brethren, I do have any food, so I'm borrowing three loaves of bread. Is the church with me? Good, good. My man answer back from inside. He don't open the door, you know. Answer back from inside. And he says, he says what? Don't trouble me. Why? Because my door is shut and my children are with me in bed and I cannot get up right now to give you no bread. I'm in verse 8. This is Jesus' story. Stay the preacher. Verse 8. Jesus says, I, let me read, I say to you that though he will not rise and give him any bread because he's friend, 
Watch this, watch this. Watch this. Let me break this on for you. I say to you, even though they are friends, he will not get up and give him bread on the basis of their friendship. But because of his persistency, he will rise and give him as many bread as he wants. Let me break that down for you. Let me break that. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. All eyes on me. All eyes on me. You two in the United States of America. All eyes on me. Watch this. Let, let me help you. Who that? Hey, I'm a man. Walk one. Well, I beg, I beg you, lend me three loaves of bread. For those of you who are in the States, I'm talking Jamaican right here. <laughs> lend me three loaves of bread. My man answer back inside. Listen, man, my door shut a long time. My children are inside, and I can't get up right now. So I can't help you. What do you think the man outside did? <laughs> Let me three loaves of bread. 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 If he's going to sleep for the rest of the night, he better get up and give him bread. Because I'm not stop knocking until you get up and give me bread. The reason why some of us don't get no bread, we stop knocking too quickly. Persistency. You pray and pray and pray and pray until God open heaven's door and flood you with a blessing. He gave another, he gave another parable. This is in Luke chapter 18. It's called the persistent widow. In Luke 18 verse 1. Then, G, help me read. then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always what? Pray and do not. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I have something praying for, for years and no years and no years and I'm not giving up. In our union, we have something called push. Pray until something happens. Don't give up. Here's a story. Here's a story. So he said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither fear God nor care about man. We call him the wicked judge. Is the church with me? And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Every day, this poor widow got to the judge, begging the church to grant her justice. Bible says for some time, he refused. Every time the woman went to him, he refused. The woman kept coming back. 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 He refused. He refused. Jesus says, but finally... The wicked judge said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keep bothering me, hey, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. In other words, this woman would never stop coming to court until that wicked judge get up and give her justice. What's the message? Bother God. Bother him today, bother him tomorrow, bother him, bother him, bother him, bother him, bother him, bother him until something happens. And then the Lord said to the disciples, listen to what that unjust judge says. Here's the, here's the pause. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? No. I tell you the truth. He will see that they get justice and get it quickly. However, when the son of man come, will he find faith, persistent faith in the church?
Prayer. Prayer is a weapon of our warfare. Many of us, if I ever call for testimony, the line would be too long. Who can testify where prior has bring us from. Hey! So for those of you under this tent who have not yet given your heart to the Lord and are struggling out there, you can't get around, life is rough. I want you to learn to pray and start tonight. Prior is our weapon of our fire. Prior lock lion's mouth. Are you hear me? When the enemy rise up against you, prior can shut them down. I'm a living testimony to that. Prior shut the lion's mouth. One whole night, Daniel was in the lion's head and he prayed and God just shut their mouth. Prior. No, no, no weapon you have out there. No, no enemy you have out there can conquer you when you live on your knees. Is the church with me? They can form their weapon, but no weapon can prosper against you when you live on your knees. Prior. Prior quench the fire. Three Hebrew boys, when the government threatened their lives, those boys stood up and said, if you want to kill us, you can kill us, but we're not bowing to your image. Are you with me? Prior! They walk in the fire, not one burn. Prior. Prior, prior, prior. Prior extend Ezekiah's life. This guy was about to die, and he turned his face to the sea, to the wall, and he begged God for mercy. This one, when, when the doctor gives you a bad diagnosis and there's no medication in the pharmacy can help you. Prior! Prior. Prior. Hey, hey, hey. God, he, hey, why? God lock up heaven three and a half years because one man pray and God open it back because one man pay. Prior! From the prison walls, Peter and John lock away in prison. And the Bible says they go down on their knees and pray to God. God sent an angel and shook off the prison door. Prior. Jonah, in the belly of a fish, bottom of the sea, running away from God. But when he made his mistakes and saw his mess, he called out to God from the fish belly and God heard him and let the fish vomit him back up. Prior. 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 From the dungeons of Samson's prison. Mess up his life with women. Dug out his two eyes. Turn him into a slave. His way, his lifestyle have brought him down to nothing. They lock him up as a prisoner in the, in the prison, grinding grain for the enemy. 
uh, with his head ball. But praise the Lord, Samson's childhood memory kick in. And he remember growing up in the church of God. And he remember how his mother and father used to pray to God. And down in the prison as he grind the mill, he sent up a word of prayer. Oh God, I know I mess up before you. But if you can only give me one more chance, Jesus. One more chance, Jesus. One more chance, Jesus. One more chance. And God heard the prayer. Here started to grow. Muscles started to come back. It's the church of the living God with me. Prayer. 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 We have a God who says, call upon me and I will answer you. Still the same God. Same God who lock up lion's mouth for Daniel. Same God who quenched the fire for the three boo boys. Same God who gave Ezekiah 15 more years. Same God who, who lock up heaven when, when, when prophet Elijah prayed. Same God who fly prison doors. Same God, same God, same God who heard runaway Jonah. Same God, same God who heard uh, repenting Samson. Same God. Hey, 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 all of these guys are dead and gone, but the same God is still alive. Yeah. And if you call out to him, yeah. he will answer. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I have two prayers tonight. Two short prayers. One for the men and one for the women. <laughs>